Hey babes, it's Cass and welcome to our January 2023 wrap up where I have been MIA, inactive, in my own little dream world and books and not doing well. But I have pink hair now and I'm back to chat, I guess. So, um, timestamps is always down below. I'm gonna go over the four books I read this month which I was only anticipating to maybe read one or two. Um, a little bit about how I'm doing, which will probably be at the end of this video because I talk a lot. <laughs> um, and then other like baby mini book haul and current kind of reads. Um, so if you're interested in any of that and looking for something specific, timestamps down below. But otherwise, let's jump into the books I read this month. So if you're not aware, this year I decided to do a reading challenge with each month's name in the title of a book and that's how I started this month and the first book I read this year was The 10,000 Doors of January. Now I want to say, even if I say these books are good or bad, my mental status right now is I have not had much sleep in a week, which I will talk about this later but my reaction and like discussion of these books, I mean better than I'm able to produce right now, I guess. So um, if you're not aware, this is The 10,000 Doors of Janu January by Alex E. Harrow. Um, I think legitimately this was the best book I could have started the year with. Um, I This was so easy to digest. I really liked her writing style and I really kind of found myself immersed um, within the story and I wanted to hear more. And so I guess the best way to kind of wrap this up is magical realism and portal fantasy, which I didn't even know was a thing, but I love it. and. I think one thing that, uh, first I guess I should say that I rated this five stars. The only thing that might or hasn't at this point but could potentially dock half a point is the book within a book and I didn't necessarily love the book that was within the book and that may not make sense but there's like another book that's been written out in here to try to give you more context of the story but I don't feel like it added anything and it really kind of took me out of the parts about our main character that I actually loved um, and our main character's name is January which you know is fitting I did I believe I underlined a few things and I dog-eared a few pages there was some things in here. I've been really thinking about finding like one passage or one quote or one part of each book that I could read that like sums up probably the most beautiful part to me. The page I'm gonna read in here is just kind of a little snippet of something I liked, but it says, it's a profoundly strange feeling to stumble across someone who desires are shaped so closely to your own, like reaching towards your reflection in a mirror and finding warm flesh under your fingertips. If you should ever be lucky enough to find that magical, fearful symmetry, I hope you're brave enough to grab it with both hands and not let go. I don't know. I, this was an easy read. I wrote down that this was 365 pages, which cheesy as all hell, I guess, in this moment to me. But I kind of just really loved it. It, it I honestly think more so that this felt like a, a, a YA book. I don't think it is. I don't think it's considered that, but um, because January is so young and you're following through her through her story of just, I don't know a better way to describe it besides layers and doors. It's portal fantasy, it's magical realism. It is enough of the little bit of spooky bits that I really like. One thing that I did love in here was um, I could see exactly why the author of The Hazelwood loved this book. This feels like the same vibes that 
um, Hazelwood gave me. Um, that one felt more young and this one feels a little more like young adult status. Um, but it gave me those same kind of vibes. So if you've ever read Hazelwood, I could not recommend this enough. <coughs> Our total pages read in this was 365. And I will be keeping this book. We'll be keeping it probably not just because it's like a five star read, but because I genuinely just, I could not be more happy with the book to have started my year out with. Next up is a book I would never pick for myself, but it was gifted to me um, by my mom that read it on a plane. And I think she got it at the airport and she's like, She's very cute in the way that she gives me or like hands me her books to read them Which I've read a few over the years every time she gives me one I basically read it um, And she's like I just wanted to hear your feedback on it Nicholas Sparks it, In my understanding is like everything that I don't necessarily love <laughs> Like not the book genre I'm after but this was called the wish um, by Nicholas Sparks and it was predictable as all get out. Um, I think I rated this, I have to look, I didn't write my ratings down in here. I rated this a four because it made me cry twice and it was to me extremely predictable. I called the two big plot situations towards the end of this book. I knew them, they, it, again, so predictable to me. My mom said she didn't anticipate them, so it gutted her, but those sections also made me cry. Um, and this was really easy to read. I kind of read probably the last two thirds of this book in one night, because I was just pulled into the story. Um, and it, it was romance, it, but again, this feels like a YA kind of romance to me. I can see how it's adult. There are adult features in here. There's, I think a lot of this is like, you got to be adult to understand a lot of the context of some stuff. Um, but personally, I would classify it more in the YA genre. Um, but again, I'm not a romance reader and... I don't know, maybe I'm wrong in my ideals of like romance or the fact that I've not really ever given it a shot because I don't hate sappy love romantic stuff because that's kind of who I am in my like actual real life. Um, so maybe that's something I will kind of discover through this year by leaning into reading actual romances. Um, but yeah, I rated this four star. I will not be keeping it. Um, I'm gonna pass it on in like a little library or something. Um, I think one thing I want to do is get myself an uh, embossed stamp and then I want to be able to change the year out and then stamp in here like my Instagram or something like a way to connect with people if they do end up picking up one of my actual books. I would love to be pen pals with someone. That's real cheesy probably, but won't be keeping this. It's in the box. It was in the box and it will go back in the box of like 40 books I have to um, put in little libraries. That was book two and on to book three. This is On Earth We're Brief Briefly Gorgeous by Ocean Vuong. Um, this came so highly recommended, so highly rated. I've heard everyone rave about this and I gave it two stars. And <laughs> it wasn't at all what I thought that it would be and it was so boring which is makes me kind of feel bad to say because there are some really important topics throughout the book um you know it says on here an exploration of race class masculinity in our current American moment and I do agree with that but holy shit this was miserable to read like the dialogue of this i i have to just read my notes to you on here <laughs> i said chaotic stream of consciousness but not a pretty fever dream long drawn out mismatch written letter to the mother that can't read that's you know our main character call he goes by little dog he's writing to his mom that can't read um, and holy shit, can you tell, like, he is just stream of consciousness. One thing makes him think of something else, and then I feel like he's not finishing a story, and he's, like, stumbling through his words. Um, I said, on the verge of an ex 
ex existential crisis in re-examining everything in his life to figure out what and why he is anything at all. Uh, I need to leave this as an actual review on Goodreads and I might. That like if someone, I, I feel like, felt like if someone finally sat down and thought about all their trauma and retold it all to a therapist, had moments of important topics but too poetically polished. Um, almost felt memoirish, like every detail of a life, most of which nobody cares to hear about, usually unless you personally connect to it, but also so nonsensical and with a lot of stories, just trauma after drama after trauma on repeat. And then I just have to say, oh, I didn't mention, um, the Nicholas Sparks, The Wish was 385 or 387 pages. This one was 242. Um, but I just have to mention, and please look up trigger warnings for this, there is a scene with a monkey in here that fucked me up, and since I read this, now looking at a monkey makes me want to throw up. Like, I think this is one of the first sections in a book in my recent memory that actually made me queasy, um, and I wasn't really into that. <laughs> I mean, I feel like that kind of goes without saying, but I did dog ear one part in here since I'm trying to find sections to read. Um, <laughs> said, when I first started writing, I hated myself for being so uncertain about images, clauses, ideas, even the pen or journal I used. Everything I wrote began with maybe and perhaps and ended with I think or I believe, but my doubt is everywhere, Ma. Even when I know something to be true is bone, I fear the knowledge will dissolve, will not, despite my writing it, stay real. I'm breaking us apart again so that I might carry us somewhere else. Where exactly, I'm not sure. Just as I don't know what to call you, white Asian orphan American mother. It felt like a personal journal or like a diary that I always write, but so extreme like almost as if someone sat down and checked off all these tropes that they had to hit to make this like emotional response happen in the reader um, and I didn't feel anything I was deadpan faced through this besides the really disgusting part about the monkey um, so this was disappointing I am absolutely not keeping this um, and I can't wait to pass it on. I think I did end up, um, every book basically that I have is from thrift books or secondhand, um, like Goodwill, The Ark, thrift store kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, emboss this maybe if it's worth that to me, um, and pass it on. Lastly, I just finished this, my little bookmarks on there from, um, earlier today. I just finished this at work. Um, here's another example, it's from Thrift Books, but it came from the Brooklyn Public Library. Um, this is You Feel It Just Below the Ribs by Jeffrey Kanner and Janina Mathewson, which are creators of Within the Wire. I gave this three stars, and let's see what I wrote about it here. Uh, I think I'm gonna read, yeah, I have two things, two things dog-eared in here, so I'm gonna read one to you, um, but I wrote Watercolor Quiet. Such a noble quest, but eternal sunshine for the spotless mind vibes. I was bored with the dialogue and disappointed in the ending. I feel like it was an intense urgency of build up, all to literally have it be like, <laughs> okay, here's my story, no resolution, I'm dead, bye. <laughs> like, which I don't feel like this cover matches this book at all which is really disappointing to me because I thought this was going to be like something that hit me hard. I thought I was going to have an emotional reaction to this. I found the reading pretty easy, um, but I don't know. I don't, I feel like the synopsis of it on the back, which I've read before is just accurate, but you're following a manuscript by a Dr. Miriam, but she goes by Miri a lot, is supposedly discovered on the floor boards of the attic room in Stockholm. It's about a great reckoning 
I don't, I don't know. There's a great reckoning of war and then a new society that's born. And I wrote, I said watercolor quiet, um, and I don't want to spoil that, but that was a really interesting concept. And I said it was a noble quest because in the beginning, I thought it was such a cool way to try to help people through this reckoning and this war and trauma. And then what it turned out to be and what it grew to be, it felt very in the vein of like certain parts of 1984 and Brave New World. Um, <clears throat> and I think those were things that took me out of this. I, again, like this whole first portion was so interesting. I found the beginning more interesting than the end. The end ended in such an urgent kind of situation that I was kind of on the edge of my seat. Like I was late clocking back into work from uh, lunch today because I just wanted to power through this and the epilogue at the back. And it's painted as like this manuscript that's found and something and then and then the authors put in notes in there to be like look we know that blah 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 and we're not sure about and and this thing it was yeah i don't know i gave it three stars i won't be keeping this either um i think that's a big thing for me moving forward with books is if i didn't feel an emotional reaction to it or i don't want to reread it it just has to go um so of the four books that i read this month um, three of them will be leaving and you fill it just below the ribs. I need to read the section there. It was 371 pages. Let me look back through here and see which one I wanted to read to you. In here, maybe this will tell you something about it. It says, clearly it was not enough to remove someone's emotional connection to their memories. Repackaging trauma was not enough and open boxes demand opening. But what if I could remove painful memories entirely? And then on this one. It is one of the universe's deepest and cruelest jokes that it takes a lifetime to learn the lessons you need in order to live. So, doubling down really quick, there were a few things that she said in this book at the beginning or towards end of chapters that I was like, fuck, you wrote that so beautiful. But the dialogue with, hopefully this isn't a spoiler, but like with her wife later, it's like, I was so bored by that. I didn't give a shit anything they were talking about and it didn't feel relevant to the story to me. Um, but she also recognizes that in here. She keeps and continues, which I kind of liked in a way, by saying this is irrelevant. My feelings are irrelevant. Your thoughts on this are irrelevant. It's irrelevant, but it's documenting into a manuscript some reality that existed. So it's like, I understood that part of it, but again, not keeping. So for all of January in those four books, I read a total of 1,365 pages, which is awesome. Um, like I said, way more than I thought I would get to, but things have been happening in my life and reading has been an escape, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But now we're going to move on to a mini book haul um, and current reads. So I've actually read more pages than that because I am not very far. I am 33 pages into um, The Once and Future Witches by Alex Harrell, which also... If that name sounds familiar by two seconds, she also wrote um, The 10,000 Doors of January. Um, I'm only 33 pages into this. So far, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, this one's, to me, is a little bit longer of a little over 500 pages. So she's a little thick one, but she seems to have this like, I don't know what you call it, like the rip texture, the texture on all the pages like that which I find interesting, but I think these are both beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm in for the long haul for this, um, and you'll hear probably about this more in February because that's a current read. And another current read is just going through the Nordic tales, um, folk tales from Norway, Sweden, Finland, Iceland, and Denmark. Um, and I'm only through the first tale, so I am only 23 pages into this. Um, and this is just like something else to break up, like a, a palate cleanser per se between books. I kind of view this as um, because I need like a moment to decompress from some of the stuff that I've read, to digest it, to, you know, gather my thoughts about the book. And then I'll read like a little tale. And I, I don't necessarily know why Nordic Tales. Um, I don't know. 
this one's pretty interesting so this is like part of that little mini book haul and also a current read next and i cannot wait to start this is the sister who ate her brothers and other gruesome tales by jen campbell um i've had this on a wish list to buy for myself pretty much for the last like year and a half i think when did it come out yeah pretty much since i knew it was coming out um again if you know anything about me gruesome horror thriller gross stuff for the most part I'm into so very excited for this um and maybe you'll you'll hear about this at some point at some time in this year through some wrap-up another one that i got which i've had my eye on for a while warner's nomenclature of colors adapted to zoology botany chemistry mineralogy anatomy and the arts by p sim sim beautiful hello i don't have much awareness of what this book is about but it just died dives deep onto some colors and um as a graphic design major and just art lover this is just like something to expand my mind with colors which i love and then last but certainly not least is One Fun Day with Lewis Carroll, a celebration of wordplay and a girl named Alice by Kathleen Krull and Julia Sarda. Julia Sarda? Um, again, this has been on my wish, wish list for a while um, and I don't really know much about it to be honest, um, but again, if you know anything about me, I am obsessed with Alice in Wonderland and I just collect different versions of Alice in Wonderland and Through the Looking Glass in any version I can find pretty much and then anything kind of relating to Alice or the topic or a retelling or another deep dive or something in that vein um, I'm always going to be after so that is the last little part of the little book haul and now life update I guess um I don't have a script. I haven't thought about what I'm gonna say. I don't even know how I feel about anything. <sighs> I'm just tired and I'm not doing well and I haven't slept really at all in the last two weeks, kind of off and on. Um, I think this is pushing me currently in my life to, if possible, find a way to like deep dive a little further or try to understand clairvoyance um because i knew something was coming before it happened and i always know something's coming before it happens and it always manifests in me in some way that matches the degree of something that comes out and again i'm being vague here but you know i really thought it is different, but I really thought 2023, it will be different moving forward. But I thought the beginning of it would be different than how 2022 started for me. And 2022, which I discussed, I don't know, I'll fucking link it or something, my um, wrap up of the year or like last video of the year or something like that talking about everything. But I had mentioned, you know, that the first seven or eight months of my 2022 were really difficult with loss of people in my life. Um, and this is different, um, but this hits closer to home. Those things were like on a superficial kind of basis. They taught me a lot. I am very thankful for the lessons that I learned in 2022. And it taught, it really did. It really taught me so much. It took and trimmed the fat of bad things and toxic things even further out of my life. Uh, 2022 brought kind of some people in and situations in that needed to be dealt with and they were dealt with. Um, and so 2023 is different in, I am the most comfortable and confident in myself as a human being that I've ever felt in my life. Um, it is such a weird duality in my life right now with how good I personally feel 
how confident I feel, how much healing I have done, how much I have learned, the amount of time I've put into therapy, into self-help, into self-care, into reading and understanding books, into journaling, into decompressing, into meditating, into yoga, like, I am in such a good place personally, but around me and directly, like as head on as it possibly could be directly affecting me is something that is now a repeating pattern um, done to me on the behalf of someone else, I guess is the best way to say it. and. I want to be vague because it really isn't any of your fucking business. It's nobody's business, but I make these videos to wrap up. I appreciate these memories. If someone watches them, phenomenal. If not, it's still decompression for me and it's still like a half mini therapy session kind of for me. Um, and it's just being real about where I'm at and who I am in my life. Um, and I do thoroughly enjoy that, so maybe my attitude is just shitty because I'm absolutely exhausted. And yesterday I was really mad and I cried a lot. Um, and the day before that I was really hopeless and I cried a lot. Uh, today I feel like I'm just floating and I'm probably going to cry a lot. It, like Nighttime is really difficult for me. Um, but what I said stands. Um, this is a repeating pattern. I'm just trying to figure out and really not doing anything about my place in this situation. Um, I know I will be okay. I know that I am strong and I know that I can get through things and I know that like acting or reacting emotionally is not beneficial to me um, which obviously you can't help like if you have something that hurts you you have an emotional reaction to it but I'm juggling a lot of like my personal thing giving space and respect I think more to this person than they've shown me um, but also respecting that they are going through something and then there's also the layer of the combination of the two, like the relationship. Um, <clears throat> yeah, and then it's, it's other things. It's kind of just really honestly all at the same exact time waking up to two other situations in my life where I have put myself in a position with these relationships with these people um, to kind of give them more than they're giving me. So again, lessons still being learned here or I don't know, it's just interesting. I feel like I'm really approaching some of these situations. I'm honestly approaching a lot of them with less tears than I think I ever would have in my life before. Um, but like I said earlier, like I'm really leaning into the books and I'm leaning into journaling, but journaling right now is hard for me because I don't really know how I feel. Um, I'm not interested in making any big decisions right now. I'm not interested in trying to think I have it all figured out. I'm not interested and trying to rush the process of anything that is currently happening or to feel better or you know I'm just really in the thick of it um I'm less sad maybe than I thought I would be I'm angry um I'm hurt that first day I was really devastated when some things kind of came out um it's kind of crazy, like I've just learned through so much through my 20s, later 20s into my early 30s of like, you're just always going to be met with situations that maybe you didn't think would ever happen that you didn't want to deal with that you don't want to deal with. Um, I feel wise, I feel level-headed, I feel 
good in reminding myself to just slow down and to just feel what I feel and not be running from it. Um, Cause I'm really great and I realize this about myself. I'm really great at recognizing and internalizing and shutting down and going into myself and feeling my emotions, but I'm not the best at working through them. I run from them and do something stupid or chaotic. I change my hair. I look for ways of control. Um, and I don't know, it's, I've obviously changed my hair, but I think that's just par for the course when I feel lost. Um, I don't know, this, this is a new situation for me. Um, and I'm so kind of thankful in a way, like some of the stuff that I've been through has really helped me have some real grounding in this situation that makes everything literally could instantly change 180 in two seconds if I chose that. Um, but another thing I usually do in these wrap ups is talk about games that I've played. Well, I haven't played shit. I haven't been on the computer. The last thing I played was, um, I have a little, um, realms, uh, playing with my son with Minecraft. And then the other thing, the only other time I've played games, period, this whole month is, I think it was... New Year's Eve or New Year's Day with a bunch of my like SMP friends we played um, and their friends and significant others and stuff we played um, Among Us, which was actually really fun. I've never played the game before. I just know a lot about it or knew a lot about it when it was super popular and hadn't thought about it in years. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the only game, but I don't know. I just, that's basically where I've been if anyone has even worried or been concerned or cared. Um, I've just been reading and I've been quiet and I've been cooking dinner, which I need to get off here and do now. Um, and I've been crying, a lot of crying, but I'm not talking to anyone about it. Um, I've told one person like one sentence of something that is happening. And the rest, I don't want to tell anyone. Um, I think this is a season of awareness that I wish I had like closer friends that I could tell, but I also don't want the judgment or um, honestly the embarrassment I feel about this situation that I've been put in that I didn't do to myself, but it's a very difficult, weird thing. I don't know. Um, this is, pff, I don't even know what's gonna change. It'll develop, I'll feel fine and then feel worse. I really have no idea and I'm not trying to promise anything to myself, promise anything to the situation or this person or anything. I'm just being honest about how I feel every day with myself. I'm, I don't know. I really genuinely have no clue what I'm going to do or how I really feel about a lot of what is happening. I feel like I've talked more here so vaguely about something than I kind of have spoken words in general in the last couple of weeks. Um, yeah, I don't know. Things are just not where I thought they would be. Um, and such is life such as life and 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 I will reiterate <laughs> right here it is one of the universe's deepest and cruelest jokes that it takes a lifetime to learn the lessons you need in order to fucking live <laughs> but yeah that's that's where I'm gonna end it um hope you've had a great January I have no clue what I will make in February, what I will, I don't know. The only thing I know about February is I will be going to work every day that I'm scheduled to work and I will be reading my February flowers, which is part of my challenge and obviously working on other reading and journaling stuff. Um, 
I meant to give a no spend update on here too because that was my things. I think I've spent money three days out of this whole month of January. Um, but yeah. I just, I'm just floating right now. Okay, babes. <laughs> See you guys in some other video at some point, I'm sure. Um, be well and eventually I will see you. Bye.